I did not think I'd be making another one of these eShop videos so soon after the last one. And I feel like I say that every time I do make one of these. But we knew September and this time of year we were going to get slammed with games on the Nintendo Switch. Not only big budget titles from Nintendo themselves, but a load of gems just being splattered all over the eShop. And it's the kind of thing where you blink and you miss it because there are so many games going up every day. And that's where I come in. It's my responsibility responsibility as I've deemed myself worthy of such responsibility <laughs> to keep an eye on this eShop for you and when I find 10 really great games to make one of these videos. Whenever I film he gets so hyper he runs up here and starts spazzing out on the floor. Smash like on this video and subscribe for this little adorable guy. Do it for him, not for me. And really quickly before we dive into 10 more amazing eShop games you need to play, let's hear from Skillshare. Well it's it's me. It's not actually- it's me talking about- Alright guys, this is super important. You might notice he hates being on camera, but you might also notice that this video right now actually looks, um, good. <laughs> and, uh, the sad thing is, it's the same camera I've been using for like two years now. It just turns out I had no idea how to use it. Sounds like I'm trying to sell it right now, but this is actually what happened. Right as I opened up the website, smack bang on the front page, I found Justin Bridges' course on DSLR fundamentals. And I learned that, yeah, I've been doing just about everything wrong. In just minutes, I learned more about ISO, aperture, shutter speeds, and so much more than I knew before. You see the difference on the same camera? If you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community with thousands of classes covering all kinds of things. Premium memberships give you unlimited access so you can join classes and communities that are just right for you, like me and cameras. And it's also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And Simon here, who you can now see in crystal clear quality, thanks to Skillshare, wants you to know that if you use my specific code down below, you'll get two months free. So you can learn all you need to know about cameras and then bail, but don't tell them I said that. <laughs> Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about some games you should play on the eShop. Between that indie direct we had a few weeks back and myself yabbering on about this game, there's a chance you've at least heard of Risk of Rain 2. But there's also a pretty good chance you still have no idea what Risk of Rain 2 actually is. In fact, when I was first told about the game, I said, what, a game where you're just kind of standing around hoping it doesn't rain? Diving back into my own meme for a second, Risk of Rain 2, it truly is an addictive kind of game. It's a multiplayer roguelike that has you pick between a cast of characters and every character has different movesets and abilities. Then you and up to three of your other friends, if you've got them, I haven't managed to get a full party yet, but if you have three friends, y'all slug it out in wave after wave of enemies. As the difficulty increases from easy to straight up laughing in your face. The best part, and I mean the best part, is that the game is full of loot and a huge variety of items to find throughout each level. Every item not only has some unique crazy ability to power up your character in a multitude of ways, but something I really appreciate is the items actually attached to your character model. Health packs to your hip, ukulele to your back. By the time you hit that last level, you'll have more things strapped to your person than I have games that I'm addicted to. So, so a lot, apparently. You never know what item you're gonna find in what chest or lockbox. It's always a gamble. So each playthrough ends up feeling unique as you're always some new kind of beefed up superhero. One go round, you might be a triple jumping son of a gun spraying chain lightning into your foes. And the next, you might be spraying bullets at quintuple speed while critting on each hit. Didn't breathe through that entire part. <laughs> There's an item for everything and it's so much fun. Oh, and I know it's getting a physical in November, but I, I, I kind of forgot about that while I was writing this video and it's still digital only for now, so screw you, it's my video. <laughs> now y'all know I love me some VR and by far one of my favorite VR experiences so far has been super. <laughs> Ha, which I can't think of that name without saying it that way. It's a game that really makes you feel like John Wick. As you dual wield pistols and throw ashtrays to crumble the minimalistic red glass enemies that are trying to not alive you. Stay monetized, stay monetized, stay monetized. The best part in all of this, time only moves when you do. So yes, you can literally Neo Matrix dodge those bullets if that's what you're into. Honestly, Super Hot in VR is so freaking cool. I never saw myself being able to play it outside the virtual reality space. So I decided to give it a crack when it surprise dropped on the Switch a few weeks back. And uh, shocking no one, it's still really good when played with your standard Joy-Cons and buttons. In fact, I found my 
myself having a lot more control over, well, myself. On PlayStation VR, I was constantly dropping out of camera view, not being able to pick up weapons on the ground while I'm getting shot in the face. And trying to successfully throw anything in VR is just a nightmare. On Switch, I'm actually able to play the way I wanted to play in VR, and it's still really, really fun even if I don't feel as cool. So where is the challenge in a game where you can freeze time and bend reality to your will? Well, you are stupidly outnumbered and outmatched by loads of enemies. Sure, you can dodge bullets, but you can't dodge a barrage of bullets when there's nowhere to hide. Try, die, repeat again and again until you get so good beating that wave of enemies to a pulp that by the time you actually beat them, it will appear as if you're really reading the matrix of the game and it's just about one of the coolest feelings you can have. Yeah, still better in VR, but still worth it on Switch. Sydney Hunter is a game, but it's a game created and developed by a good friend of mine, John aka Gamester81. This guy is old school cool. He's had a retro gaming YouTube channel since way before I even considered starting YouTube. In fact, John was the first beautiful human to ever give me a shout out on this platform about six years ago now. Wow, time flies. Wow, I'm getting old. <laughs> Oh, and he knows his retro games. I mean, the man runs his own retro video game convention in Phoenix, so who better to make a retro-inspired video game than the man who literally is named Game Stir? Also, you better enjoy this game because I've heard if you don't like it, he comes to your house and he slaps you in the face and you don't want to get slapped by those hands. All right, enough about John. How's the game? Sydney Hunter will scream Super Nintendo and probably Indiana Jones vibes right in your face. The gameplay is smooth with loads of hidden references and Easter eggs to other games of the past scattered throughout. Like this second boss, who is literally a Mega Man boss and should be approached as such. He was pretty, he was pretty hard. It, I don't, I can't, I couldn't beat him. <laughs> Sydney Hunter is a neat action adventure platformer and collecting all these gems throws me into a late 90s nostalgia trip. My favorite part for sure is the visuals though. John sat me down and showed me all the Mayan culture he'd referenced to build the game and it's really beautiful and well designed when you see the comparisons. All the gods in the game are based on actual Mayan gods and deities and it all takes place during the Wayeb, which was an actual time during the Mayan calendar year. You notice how every time I try and pronounce something I'm not confident in, I I, like laugh while I'm pronouncing it. <laughs> That's how you know, I don't know what I'm saying. The passion behind this game can be seen so clearly and for that, this game is absolutely worth it. Also, the man gave me a shout out when I had like four subscribers, so it's time we repaid the favor by checking out his game. It's like full circle. The circle of life. Hotline Miami Collection. Do I really have to break this one down for you guys? Do I really? Do I really? What am I doing with my face? <laughs> I'm surprised it took this long for the Switch to see the Hotline Miami games. I mean, we already have quite a few games like this on Switch that have performed really well. Regardless, I'ma keep this part short. I mean, the less amount of time I show this awesome gore fest in my video, it's probably better for my ad revenue anyway. Sure, it's pixel art. Sure, it's somewhat of a basic premise. And sure, the synthwave soundtrack that pumps through each level is just about the best 80s inspired music I've heard in a video game. But does that make both these games in the collection pack worth the price? Yes, yes, all those things and more, yes. What you're seeing on the screen right now is pretty much the entire game for both of them, and even after finishing both of these adventures, you'll wish there was more levels to play. Buy it, download it, play it, enjoy it, or not. Blasphemous is a game I've been excited for and following for about a year. In fact, back in November of last year, I made a little video about indie games coming to Switch you might not know about, and this was one of them. It's nice to see all these things coming full circle today. And you know a Kickstarter game has potential when they ask for $50,000 and they get $330,000. And what did they do with all that extra cash? Polish up an already promising game into something truly spectacular. Some people have referred to this game as a mix-up of Dead Cells and Hollow Knight. And I would agree, but I would splash in some Dark Souls into it too. Blasphemous is a non-linear hack and slash adventure, and I'm not sure why it isn't described as a Metroidvania, because that's what it is. Oh, and the art. Oh my lordy, the art. That's my favorite part here. I barely even know what to say. I mean, just scroll down their Kickstarter page and you can take a look at some of these enemy animations. I mean, of course, you can look at them in the game too, but if you stop and stare at them for more than a second, 
you'll die. <laughs> so this is an easier way of doing it. Animated pixel by pixel at some of the best work I've personally seen since the Metal Slug series. Ah, <sighs> but the gameplay as a big slap in the face. The more you die, the harder the game becomes as guilt overcomes you and restricts your abilities. This is truly one of those games for sadistic individuals who enjoy punishing themselves in the worst of ways. It's fantastic and I love it and I am gonna stick to other games that don't make me hate my own existence. <laughs> How are you liking the video so far? You enjoying it? You're still here? Well, have you hit like yet? probably should. I told you at the start of this video that this list was going to be one of my favorites because of the games, man, the games. And that continues into this next one, Creature in the Well. I love when a fresh new indie game comes my way that has some exciting original concept I haven't seen done before, and that's exactly what Creature in the Well does. Have you ever wanted to play a hack and slash game and a pinball game at the same time? Well, now you can. Visually, Creature in the Well exceeds itself, with backgrounds fit for framing around your house and colors that pop so hard they might actually crack your Switch screen. Then there's the actual game itself, which will have you crawling through eight different dungeons armed with various weapons and objects you use to bash balls around the screen, hitting targets and solving puzzles. It's exhilarating grouping together a few balls grouping up a few balls and slashing them around, building up energy and momentum before sending them flying towards bumpers or enemies. Creature in the Well might be the most unique game in today's video, and for that reason it might even have somewhat of a learning curve for new players. But it's a game that deserves appreciation for standing out above the rest. Okay, so Rad takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, and I know what you might be thinking. Oh my gosh, how many games take place in a post-apocalyptic I don't want to hear it. Look, Rad doesn't just take place in a world that's long been nuked away. It takes place in a world that's long been nuked away uh, twice. <laughs> yep, everything was destroyed, rebuilt, and nuked again. That scared the living crap out of me. And all the nuking explains why there's so much genetic mutation going on in this world, and it also humorously sets the tone for the entire adventure. This game was developed by a personal favorite studio of mine, Double Fine. The same studio that made such games as, well, this one. <laughs> but also Psychonauts, Broken Age, Brutal Legend, Connect Party, all right, scratch that last one. It's clear to see this studio loves their humor and pop culture references, so that's exactly what you're gonna get in Rad. You know, as well as awesome roguelike gameplay. Most of the world is too dangerous to live in, and it's your job to do your best to fix that. Even though the more you fix, the more mutated you become. So really taking one for the team there. Your main weapon here is a baseball bat, and kinda like in Risk of Rain, the mutations you find along the way are both random and where they're found and what they can do. With many different kinds of super powered up abilities that almost make it worth having that second head. While this game is tough and you'll be dying quite a bit out there in the wastelands, much like in games like Dead Cells, your collected currency can be banked and used to upgrade yourself for the next go round. Making this game that much more Addicting. We really need a different word for that at this point. Like a code word or something, like banana. Speaking of games I'm surprised didn't get a physical, Bulletstorm exploded onto the Switch, surprisingly, the same day as Risk of Rain. Which makes sense, I guess, because they were both published by Gearbox. That's two games all of a sudden from Gearbox? Eh, it kind of makes you wonder. Hey Gearbox, you got eyes on the Switch right now. Got anything else planned? Portable Borderlands hype aside, we can all enjoy another first person shooter in the meantime, Bulletstorm. And nowhere near enough people have played this gem. It initially released back in 2011 on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and as a huge Gears of War fan, 21 year old me at the time and my friends were all really hyped for Bulletstorm, a game made by the same team of people, and let me tell you, it lived up to its hype big time. This is one of my personal favorites from last generation, and I'm so happy to see it performing this well on Switch, as it's by far one of the most impressive ports so far. So just grab it already and start lasso whipping enemies towards you and then shotgun blasting them in the face and getting those sweet arcade style points for the headshots. <gasps> Oh, and apparently Duke Nukem is in this game now. You know how Duke Nukem like swears all the time. There's no real getting around that. Well, he also swears in the trailer for this game. The trailer which Nintendo uploaded to their official YouTube channel. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, the official Nintendo YouTube channel now officially has the F word on it. I swear I had another game for this part of the video. I just, I can't remember it. 
even write it in the script. I literally missed. How did I do this? It was a it was a horror game of some kind. Um. PewDiePie played it. PewDiePie, like, way back when, it's kind of how he blew up. It's a horror game, recently came to Switch, PewDiePie played it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just, I can't, it's really bad. My memory gets worse and worse the older I get. I swear that uh, when I get older, I'm gonna end up with amnesia. <laughs> Castle Crashers barely made it onto this list, as it released the day I was writing the video up. And uh, if I didn't add it into the video, I know every top comment down below would be, Ah, you forgot Castle Crashers because it just came out. So this is gonna be the only time that I'm reviewing a video game without actually having played it. <laughs> now look, it's my freaking video and I'll do what I want. No, okay, listen, I have played this game, just not on Switch. I played it and loved it back on my 360. Castle Crashers has been a digital only game since 2008 originally only available on the Xbox Live Arcade and it's still hard for me to see it as anything other than an Xbox game too I mean the logo for it is literally the 360 controller button colors what always appealed to me about this game was its South Park-esque cartoonish art style and of course the fact that it's a beat-em-up. One of the best ones, too. Castle Crashes is undoubtedly more fun in co-op, with up to four players, and I highly recommend bringing along at least one friend, as the game was designed to be played that way. Now, this version of the game is the newest version that was released in 2015, and, uh... I never played that version either, but apparently it has some new content, so that, my friends, would be a nice little surprise for both of us. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I haven't played this game on Switch yet, but that's how confident I am that this game will always be worth its price. So many hours spent playing this game after high school with my friends, and I can't wait to finish this video so I can finally play it on Switch. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found something you want to play. If you like this video, please, I just give it a big old slap at that like button, hair flip, all over that subscribe button, and if you want that on a t-shirt, you can get it. I don't have a way to end the video, but